Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, we're going to do a, a short review on elbow gin, and then we're going to get into the fire element, where we've been working on the five elements, and uh, in the previous weeks, we've, done, we've gone from, uh, 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 we did metal and wood, and, uh, and now we're going into, into uh, we did water. We, we did water, too, yes. So we're, we're, we're getting to the, uh, the, the second half here, and we're getting into, uh, into, into fire. And it's, uh, coincidentally, uh, fire is the element of summer. And tomorrow, depending on the calendar, tomorrow or the next day is the first day of summer in the Chinese calendar. So we are entering the fire period, so our uh, discussion is timely. So, uh, uh, first, let's review the uh, elbow gin idea, and uh, I don't want to get into a whole thing on it, but the basic idea here is that the elbow gin is where you use the elbow, reaching with the elbow, in order to unkink the hose in your shoulder. So this allows for you to have the energy to express more freely through your arms and your hands. But more importantly, is that unkinking of the hose allows the whole system to go to a much higher uh, level of energy expression. And um, the, um, you know, we, we've done demonstrations of that and, and people can review earlier sessions of this uh, and, and some of the YouTube videos to see some of the, some of the actual uh, uh, power that is able to be generated. But the, the key is here that whenever you are activating your elbow chin, you, um, uh, you open an energy gate, which allows for everything else to work a whole lot better. And Besides which, it just doing it in and of itself immediately shifts your, your energy, allows for a much more integrated energy and allows you to shift very quickly into a super conscious state. So the um, uh, basic idea is, is that you are reaching with your elbow. And so doing, you're, you're opening up the shoulder joint. And the reason for this is that we, since we're very, very young, have been initiating motion from the shoulders. And this causes a log jam in the, uh, in the shoulder joint, allows the, the muscular contraction there, causes the uh, chin get get jammed up. And consequently, it disconnects by initiating motion from the shoulder. Let's say if I'm lifting my arm, and I lift it like most people would, like that. The what's happening is I'm using muscular contraction to to raise my arm, and if I initiate with that, immediately this localized muscular contraction inhibits the chi flow, not just in the shoulder but throughout the body. So it create it fragments my energy. So even if I'm getting all the other cool stuff in, in place, I'm still not operating at 100% if I am kinking the hose at, uh, at the shoulder joint. So the, uh, uh, you know, you can see it if I, if I just demonstrate here, if I just bring my arm out like that, and if I want to open my shoulder joint, I can reach with my elbow and create more space there. And my arm can get actually an inch or two longer just by just by doing that. We have a tendency as humans to find a certain uh, medium place to to set our our reach, our and and with that our our muscles and everything kind of it's a sort of a um, uh, this this medium place and it it doesn't feel comfortable extending beyond that. So by opening up and reaching and opening up, we can kind of create a lengthening 
activating the connective tissue system, creating this tensegrity, and with that, the energetic coherence that goes throughout the whole body. So by opening up here, it, it, we're, de, we're delocalizing the effort from here and actually bringing it out all the way out to the fingers. And when we do that, we generate jin. We generate this inner power and the soft power of Tai Chi. Yeah. Uh, Rick's question was about um, when you're reaching with the elbow, which direction are you reaching in? Okay. So um, the um, so the question uh, tonight was which direction are you reaching? So notice if I if I reach with my elbow by lifting my elbow, what I'm doing is I'm doing exactly the same thing as I've been talking about, which is kinking the hose in the in the shoulder. What I want to do is to reach with the elbow first and then allow the arm to pull into position. And um, so the uh, way to to develop a, 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 a an inner sense of this, because the, the idea of separating your shoulders, creating space in your shoulder is, is a little counterintuitive for, for some people. And so one way of doing it is to just bring your hand on your chest, hold your arm like that, keep your, keep your, your arm against your body and just reach down with your elbow and then relax and then reach down with your elbow and feel the shoulder joint opening as you do that. Just reach down and feel the shoulder joint opening. Good. Do it the other arm. Reach down. Good. And reach down. Good. You get that feeling of, oh, what that feels like to, to actually lengthen the connective tissue in the joint itself. So that creates space there and allows the shoulder muscles to relax, allows the shoulder muscles to, to let go. And, and they're no longer dictating the motion. Uh, it takes a long time to reprogram so that your body mind doesn't go there immediately um, with, with, your, with, with every action. But uh, eventually you gotta get to a point where it's like, you know, your, your arms are very relaxed and you're in fluid and you're able to create much more effective power with a relaxed arm than you do with a uh, with muscular tension. It's something I've done demonstrations of this where, you know, just showing how people, you know, it's very easy if someone's trying to lift from their shoulder, very easy to to keep prevent that from happening because the uh, because we have a long lever there and the fulcrum's up here. So then it's really easy to uh, to resist that. But if you and re reach with it with the elbow first opening the shoulder and then reach up with the wrist, you can amplify your effective power considerably just by doing that. So reaching down like that, that's one way to do it. And then you can do that in other directions. So you can bring it like that and just reach out to the side and just feel that just opening up that way. And these are just, these are very gross movements to create uh, a, a, an initial awareness of the of that opening, and then after a while, you just want to get it so that let's say I have a chair here and I've got the back of my chair. I feel the back of my chair with my elbow, and I just kind of just reach down and just feel myself pushing into that and just feeling that. So it's a uh, it's something that you you gradually get an awareness of, but it takes considerable awareness, uh, considerable time to develop that awareness rather. So, you know, and if you just bring your, uh, bring your hand on your elbow like this and just reach out and press against your hand, just pushing forward with that without moving, you know, your, 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 your upper body there. So you're just, you're creating or moving it very little. So you're getting, you know, you're just opening that. So getting that, creating that look, so you can get to do less and less so that eventually it just becomes a thing of just being like this 
and you just whoop, you can immediately feel the energy when I, just by reaching out like that. One of the uh, things I pointed out in, in, the, in the blog post I wrote about this was, you know, the research is done by just going into a Superman posture. You know, you get your, your head like this and you stand like this and you actually change your endocrines, you change your, your, your hormones in your body just by standing like this for a couple of minutes. Well, if we were to just, rather than just standing like this, we actually reach with the elbows, it doesn't take a couple of minutes to create an effect. It, you get it instantaneously. So that, that uh, the power that we see in, in that posture is amplified by consciously, mindfully opening the shoulder joints, reaching with the elbow. That uh, answer your question, Eric? Uh, unfortunately, no. It may oh, have, really? but I don't think it did because balls of the feet, activate the forefingers, open the jade pillow gate, reach with your elbows. So my position is not with my hands on my hips. It's not with my hands up. My hands are at my side, four fingers pointed, footballs. Which way to the elbow? Is it the same thing? So, which, yeah. Like this, balls of the feet. Right. Okay. Reach with the crown. Right. The jade pillow gate. Point with your index fingers. Dung Kwa. Reach with the elbows. Okay. That's so. It. It's, like, it's like almost nothing. And it's, it's not like this. It's just, mm -hmm. you're very, very, very lightly open. So there's a, rather than the arm just hanging down like this, you can see how, how this looks, right? And the, there's no chin available in this particular posture. But if I just go like that, instant chin. So then, oh. Whatever position I go into from there will be much more powerful, much more energetically full than if uh, if I'm following conventional wisdom, which is to totally relax. Right? We want we want you want to relax, but relax into a structure. You want to create a shape which allows the energy to to go where you want it to go. Then you relax. You relax your muscles. But you create the shape first, so that oh okay, I can I can now activate my chin. So slightly up and to the side, slightly in both slightly cases. Slightly rounded. Okay. Okay, but in, in any position. So whatever whatever we're doing, let's say we're going into a ward off posture. But so we set the elbow, right, and then boom like that. So instant palm chin. Whereas if I try to do that from my shoulder, no gin. But if I set the elbow first and then just bring that in place, then I have a bona fide ward off. I got one that's energetically full. It's got gin. Okay. okay. All right. I'll work on it. Thank you, sir. You bet. Valerie. You're on mute. Sorry. Um, pulling a stand. Um, so, <laughs> something that uh, I also look for is what you've talked about is that space between the shoulder blades. Because yeah. if I'm not feeling that, even though I think I'm, you know, leading with the elbow, if I don't feel that space, then I know I'm just fooling myself. <laughs> right that i okay it's not really coming from the elbow so then i have to refocus and then lead with the elbow and it's like oh okay when i feel that um that's just that's that works for me that, that's a good tip there valerie that's a very good tip thank you yeah would you say that no matter which way you're reaching i mean it seems to me no matter which way you're reaching you're reaching your elbow 
away from your shoulder, right? No matter which way you exactly. go. Exactly. Exactly. Even if you're reaching above your head, right? You reach with the elbow and then you reach above your head, you know, and you have like say a, a white crane kind of posture, right? You're still reaching with the elbow, reaching with your fingers. You've got that, uh, you're, still, you're still reaching. If you try to do a white crane and do it all from the shoulder, you got nothing. You have, you have no power. But if this is coming up like that, bingo, you got, you got uh, lots of lots and lots of gin to, to play with. Cool. Anybody else before we move forward? All good questions. Thank you. All good questions. Da, 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 da. I think we're I think we're good to go. Okay, let's talk about fire. So happy summer uh, tomorrow. And uh, um, so we. Uh, the summer season is governed by the element of fire. It relates to the heart and the small intestine. Um, the emotions associated with, uh, with fire tend to be like uh, joy, enthusiasm on, on the positive side, also warmth. Um, the warmth of uh, human companionship or, or just compassion, that kind of thing. Um, uh, the willingness to share your heart with someone. And the, uh, on the negative side, whenever there's too much or too little uh, fire chi, then we get into anxiety and uh, frustration, there is like a disturbance in your sleep patterns, there's, um, uh, or even just, uh, you know, sadness. So there's a, uh, some people say it's, it's anger, but I, I, uh, Master Young would say it's uh, that anger is the, the province of the liver. So, and I kind of go with that. So the, whenever the anger comes from the liver, then it's transformed by the joy of the heart. So then you have a happy anger, which then you can you can use for your um, for your kung fu, and it creates a very uh, very powerful cocktail. Um, so the uh, the challenges of of fire chi. Um, particularly in this season, uh, I have found to be too much rather than too little. That the fire chi in, 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 in the season we're going into, uh, my personal encounter with it and, and what I've observed in others is that there's a tendency to get too cranked up. And so fire is uh, one of those things that depending on its manifestation, depending on its expression, you're gonna get different flavors of fire. So the, uh, you know, the fire raging out of control, you know, the wildfires in California say they, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's where you got way too much. You know, the, uh, you know, whenever it's like hardly noticeable at all, then way too little. You, uh, uh, so the different ways of, of expressing it and different ways of of controlling it, you know, you, you know, and learning when to express it and in what way, because it's a, what fire, the fire is, it's the most young of all the elements. So that is, it's, it's the most expansive, the most expressive, the most sparkly of all the elements. And it is, whereas wood is directional. Wood is, <sighs> Fire is omnidirectional. It is radiating in all directions. So whenever your chi is robust and you know, you've got a, a, a lot of yang chi, then you're going to radiate chi. You're going to have, your wei chi is gonna be very big. It's going to open up and just, you're gonna be exporting energy. 
how the, that energy, uh, what shape it takes, what, what, what frequency it's at, what the amount of coherence that you're, you're, uh, you're feeling will determine the quality of the energy that you are exporting. So um, whenever I talk about fire, learning to, to regulate your fire, because too much of that will cause you to overheat. It'll also cause your mind to get really agitated. You'll get, and the, uh, the chatter will amplify because there's, if there's too much, too much heat in the system. So the, the, uh, the heart organ works in tandem with the, uh, in partnership with the uh, pericardium which is a, a sac that surrounds the heart, which pulls heat out and then runs it out to your body. So it runs down your, the inside of your arm out through the Lao Gong point, right at the base of the, uh, of the middle finger, the palms of the hands. So that's your, you know, that's one of the five primary energy gates where the excess yang chi from the body goes out to the, the, to the Lao Gong. And uh, so we want to learn to control that, learn to be able to dispel excess so you can sleep at night, so that you're able to calm your mind, to be able to meditate, et cetera. And um, also so that you, you don't burn up. But at the same time, you want to be able to experience enough that you're, you're able to experience joy and enthusiasm. And uh, so there's a, it's a little dance that, that we do with fire. And so I would like to give you a couple of little tips here to, uh, to make, that, make that happen, how to feel into your, into your fire. And uh, regulate it somewhat. So let's, uh, the first place I think uh, I'd like to go is just to, uh, to talk about a couple of points that, uh, acupuncture points that, that, that are very helpful and, and as kind of first aid for this, but also as meditation techniques. And um, the first one is the, uh, uh, the uh, called the uh, inner gate. It's uh, pericardium six which is right here. So if you take your, your three fingers at the wrist line and you take it to the inside of, of the, uh, the third finger, that's your pericardium six, right on the center of the, the center of the wrist there. So you wanna press in on that firmly, but not uh, painfully. And so the idea is to, for like 15 seconds, you press in and uh, all the while you're breathing diaphragmatically using your diaphragm, activating your parasympathetic nervous system. I'm gonna regulate your breath. So it's about six breaths a minute. And then for five seconds, you release. And then you press in again. Good, and then release. One more. Press in.
release. This has the effect of calming the mind, calming the spirit, opening the chest. And uh, improving the circulation throughout the whole system. So now I'm going to show you another point. The uh, at the wrist line here. This is a uh, heart seven. So we're going to do the same thing there. We're going to press in 15 seconds, breathing deeply. This one's called the spirit gate. The other one was the inner gate. And let go, release. Five seconds. And press in. Breathe. Release. Yeah, so feel into the stillness how that calms the fire chi. But the fire chi is, you know, it's like banking a fire, you know, you're. Take the, you let the fire down, die down a little bit. You cover the coals with some ash so that, ah, it's there. You're, you're able to use the, you do that at night so that you're able to use those coals to start the fire in the morning. And like we want to be able to bank the fire, create a safe container for it. So it's there to feed the, the system without overdoing it without over go 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 back right down we're able to move smoothly through it using the fire whenever we need it so we're going to take this and take a uh, and shift to a slightly different approach and we're going to Feel into the heart coherence, the heart energy coherence. And I talked a little bit about this in uh, Western Gate, but it's a, um, you have these oscillating systems in, in the body, these organs which are oscillating systems. Oscillating just means that there's, you know, there's a pulsing before, you know, they're going one way or the other. The brain is an oscillating system and uh, the heart, though, is a much more powerful, larger, more dominant art, uh, oscillating system. And if you can create heart coherence, 
then it will entrain the brain to that. So the brain also becomes more coherent and you're able to get the two resonating together. You're able to create a, a system which functions a lot more smoothly. It's not something you want to stay in all the time, but it's something that you can, if you can go there whenever, whenever you want, then you're able to renew your resources. You're able to create more energy. And the energy that you're creating and the energy that you're exporting is going to be more coherent. And so if we're talking about the heart, there's a, the energy, the heart energy is associated with, with that compassion. So there, there's that, you know, we then tend to export energy, which allows us to resonate more harmoniously with other, other creatures, including, including humans. So um, to do this, we're going to, um, we're going to utilize the in, pointing the index finger as a way of, of igniting the whole body energetic connection and highly coherent throughout the whole system. We're going to reach with the elbows. Not very hard, not very far, just got to reach with the elbows, reaching with the index fingers. And breathe, breathe diaphragmatically. And what you want to do is you want to feel your heart. And for, for a lot of people, this is difficult. So if it takes, takes the one way to, to start it is to just put your hand on your, on your heart and feel it. And as you're bringing that coherence, you're, by bringing your awareness to the heart itself and the heart field, you are allowing that highly coherent chi to become the dominant energy of the system. You can further enhance the process by bringing to mind something that brings you great joy and uh, or compassion for others. Or you can meet ITU. with whomever or whatever you choose. You can establish an IU relation with your heart. There are ways to actually check your heart coherence, to actually measure it. Because it's an energetic field and it can actually be, can be represented and you can get a real time response. But what we're looking for right now is a felt sense of this. You can actually even count your heartbeats as you get more and more attuned to that.
10. Okay, so just get a feel for that. And uh, let's see if there, anybody has any questions or thoughts that they'd like to uh, like to share. How'd that go? Uh, anybody uh, questions, thoughts? Yes. Leticia. So I have a question. We got this class a few weeks ago about the orbit, the microcosmic, micro macro, whatever orbit. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if with this exercise, we we can like combine or activate the orbit yes. while doing it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You can you can do the uh, macrocosmic orbit and have any element be your theme. You can do macrocosmic orbit with a wood energy or a fire energy. And um, so, yes, you could definitely do that. That's a great idea. Thank you. Anybody else? Sam, you got something? Yes. Uh, yes, Rick. Uh, uh, those points on the wrist again, can you go over them? Because I'm not sure. sure I got them right. The uh, three fingers down on the... Uh, the uh, on the on the wrist there. That's the that's the inner gate, the pericardian six. About the center of the wrist. Yeah. This way. So so in line with the with the middle finger. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. That. And then the heart meridian runs along the outside of the. Uh, of the forearm there, down your in, uh, little finger, so right there at the base of the uh, of the hand, right just below the, uh, uh, the just below the hand there at the, at the wrist. Or that's a uh, heart seven. Heart seven, yes. Okay. okay. Yes, thank you. you bet. That that would be, that'll be that'll be left wrist. Either one. Either one, okay. Because it's, it's not because your heart is on the left. It's not because of the heart's on the left. It could be either one. No, no. It's uh, it's I, I decide. Okay, uh, Sandy. Yeah, I found that the I was a little bit tired. I'm tired t tonight, but I found that the the pericardium six kind of woke me up, and then the heart seven kind of made me tired again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kind of brought me back down to where I was. So, okay. It's interesting that uh, how pericardium six kind of really woke me up and got me focused. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Dennis. One more, Rick. You do you recommend doing those those acrotonic foot points first before before doing the uh, pointing in the elbows? Uh, they can be done first. They can be done separately. You okay. can do it. Wasn't a setup for the other one. Yeah. Uh, sure. I did it primarily as a way of calming everybody down and just kind of creating that uh, that nice. But I did feel I started feeling feel feel the pulse across my shoulders and up my neck. Okay. So it was very very, very interesting. Cool. Cool. Good. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Let's do a. Uh, we have a little bit of time left. Let's let's do a uh, standing meditation. Okay, so step out. So feel your three pillars, your balls, your feet, set your knees, reach with the crown of your head, open the jade pillow gate, tuck in the chin, relax your lower back, drop your weilu, your, your toxic. Point with your index fingers. Boom, boom, open the day. And reach with your elbows. And take a moment to feel into your heart. 
feel into your pulse, feel your circulation. Feel the capillaries swelling, engorging. Feel it in your hands, your hands getting very big. Very open. Feel the yang chi, feel the expansiveness, feel your chi radiating. Max, feel your elbows, throwing your arms in, thinking. Compressing, condensing, feeling the yin chi. Rotate your forearm so that you're holding your hands at the dantian. Feel the yin. Take your left leg and step out to the right. Right hand circles up. Feel the right elbow and turn. Feel the energy radiating in all directions. Give it on your left heel. Think of your left, bow down to the right, and then turn your left arm. Feel the energy radiating in all directions. Feel the fire tree. Bring that in. Feel the yin as you bring that in. Circle up and open. Feel the expansion. Turn. Expand. Step in, step forward, and come down. Feel the, feel the fire chi in your body. Now allow that to exit through the, bowl, the bottoms of your feet. Now the yin to fill up your body. Allow the yang chi 
inspire chi to exit through the feet, emptying out. Thanking the fire. And step in. Take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. Cool. Take a seat. See if there's any anybody has any questions. Questions, thoughts? How'd that go? Good. 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 Excellent. Yes, Leticia. So in this exercise, we were were we trying to feel the heart still as where we were doing sitting you can it it yeah, enables you to uh, the more you can attune to that the uh, the more you're able to bring in a whole body coherence but it's uh, um i like to do it just to kind of set it up and then use that as a springboard to kind of move into the rest of the exercise. But at any point, you know, you get into a posture like that and you can pause and hold that posture and feel into, feel into your heartbeat, feel into your, your uh, circulation. It's all, all part of, you know, uh, all good processes of interoception be able to do that. Okay. Cool. Thank you. That's good. Anybody else? All good. Richard, you are you having a you waving your hand there, Richard Stern? You're you're on mute. I can't tell. You're on mute, Richard. Okay. Um, anybody else? Dan, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. I found it. Okay. Uh, while we're doing this, uh, I think you pointed out uh, with the um, doing the IU with the heart, it seems like it, uh, that seems to be a good place for it. Yes. I, I agree. It's, uh, yeah. you, know, you can do that with any part of your body. And particularly if you're having difficulty with a part of your body, if something troubles them, you can, you can enter into an IU relation with that. And that creates a high level of coherence, which mm. has a healing effect on things. Oh, great. Thank you. You bet. Okay. I think we're, I think we're good. Anybody else? Oh, Richard. Richard. Yes. Good. Okay. Yes. Um, did you say earlier that Professor Chang said that we are always precarious? No. I said that, um, I should look up the quote on that. There, it, was, it struck me as, as that your, your position of your body should feel precarious. So what I mean by that is, if I'm standing up like this, let's say, and I'm, I'm feeling really cozy and comfortable and I'm at my heels and I'm like, okay, that's, that's really solid. Uh, the more solid I feel in this posture, the, uh, the less energy is being activated, activated, the less energy is being mobilized. So for me to mobilize my chi, I want to, I want to feel my, my body in that tipping point. So like, I'm like, ah, 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 ah. I could, it feels like I'm, I'm gonna fall over if I 
if uh, I go any farther. The reality is I'm actually at my most powerful in this place, but it's where you know, if, I'm, if I'm able to go to that precarious place, this is where I have shifted my, my um, center from, from being, uh, being localized in my meat body and being at the center of my energy body. Be a, that's a, one way of expressing it. So in this in this posture, you can actually see in my uh, the difference in my my presence. If I'm in my heels and I'm feeling kind of cozy back here, there is a difference in my energy than if I'm in central equilibrium. There is it mobilizes the chi. So what he's talking about is that. If you want to mobilize the chi, you need to get into that precariousness of the central equilibrium. I think that's what I'm. I think that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, that's my takeaway from it. It may not be what he intended at all, but that's uh, yeah, that's how I interpret the words. So when you when you load up one leg uh, prior to taking a step with the other. Do, yes. you pre do you become more precarious then? Yes. So okay, it's thank counterintuitive because we're looking, our bodies are looking for safety. And we're saying, no, no, trust this. It's like walking on a tightrope. You know, it's like, really? I'm going to walk on that? You know, but if, uh, if you, you know how to do it, then it's like, sure. No problem. I got this. I walked across the Niagara Falls. No problem. So the, uh, uh, but that's that's that precariousness. You have to you have to learn to love that that insubstantiality that comes with it. And then when you get into like a bow stance, then you're not precarious. Again. Um, you, you want to be there, there too. You want to maximize yeah. that, that insubstantiality in the bow stance. So if I'm doing a bow stance, say I'm like this, you know, okay, this is, okay, this is really nice and stable. Great. But I, I got nothing here. But if I go boom like this, so that I'm, I'm actually, it, my chi is mobilized whenever I'm feeling that that insubstantiality. So it's a, uh, it's just attuning to that, attuning to the insubstantiality. It feels precarious to a body that is used to substantiality, that's used to being things being solid, things being compressed, and you're saying, no, no, we're going to do something different now. <laughs> okay. Cool. You had something, Nick. Did you want to? No. Cool. You got it. Okay. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, so Jonathan, you have something you're just waving goodbye. Well, I I did actually have one thing. It it's almost as if you're saying the substantial can always almost be non precarious, but the insubstantial is always somewhat precarious. Is that is that to be really insubstantial? I mean, if it's really insubstantial you're feeling, then it's authentic and substantial is precarious and authentic substantial seems to be non-precarious. Is there something to that or? I, I think that's where you start. I okay. think after you get, I feel very comfortable in that, you know, what would be precarious to most people because I've been doing it for, right. you know, for decades. So it's like, yeah, okay. You know, just like, uh, you know, the flying Melendas, they got no problem. With the with the higher act, you know, it's like yeah, sure, right, you know. So that's a it's a question of familiarity with that. Same same thing with people who uh, are like parachuters or you know fly planes, you know, things that would you know scare the bejesus out of us. Would uh, right. we can uh, they say yeah, sure, no problem.
it, but it's like even you know your central equilibrium if people what they feel is substantial is they're not really straight and when they're when they're really straight it's precarious it's like you're about to dive off a diving board right exactly. that's the sense of precariousness too even though you've got it you know you, you've got this but it's continual checking in with precariousness that you can manage it's like manageable precariousness if that's not a right. oxymoron and i think that chong ding or central equilibrium you have to constantly go looking for that sweet spot right where you <laughs> you meet it anew meet it right. anew as if you know, you've never done it before and if if it feels so familiar to you then you're probably not there yet yeah too comfortable right that doesn't work right right so you're always kind of looking for the edge right somebody compared it to the edge exercise before and i think that's an appropriate uh an appropriate analogy okay mm -hmm. time to go love you all yes. bye -bye. thank you Rick. thank you thank Thanks, you Rick. maria take care thank all you. have a good night all good night. thank good you night. Maria. thank you Rick. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.